Donovan Mitchell was just traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And what the f So the official trade was the Cleveland Cavaliers getting Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz receiving Collins Sexton in a sign-in trade, Abaji, who was Cleveland's first round pick this year, and they're also getting Laurie Marketing, who was a nice wing for them this season, as long as three unprotected first round picks and two pick swaps. Now, this is not a bad haul for Utah. I wish they could have gotten something a little better considering Donovan Mitchell's age and his contract length. So let's begin with the players they got. Colin Sexton is a player that the Cavs didn't even want, especially to sign to a big deal like he got with Utah. But he's still a good player. On this Utah Jazz team, he's probably going to average over 20 points because there's no other real ball handler besides Talon Hurt and Tucker. Uh, Abaji looked good for the Cleveland Cavaliers in the Summer League. But again, that's just Summer League. You don't really know. But he appears to be a, a pretty good 3 and D caliber player, which you can never have enough of those on your team. And then you have Laurie Markin, who's kind of a tweener between the 4 and the 3. He's a pretty good shooter, but nothing going to really move the needle for you, uh, for, you know, for a contending team. He's a nice role player. Uh, and those three, in those three first round draft picks, I don't know what years they're in. I can imagine they're all the way up to 2029 because that's how far you can trade. And then the two pick swaps. I think Utah could have gotten a better deal. All the rumor Knicks deals seem like a better offer to me. Um, especially what's confusing is because the Jazz didn't want to pay anybody out of the trade. They wanted purely young assets on rookie contracts um, and draft picks. And they really just got draft picks and then a Baji. So they pretty much got four first round picks and two pick swaps. But it's still not a bad trade. Um, I Once they traded Gobert, I knew it was the right idea to trade Donovan Mitchell so they can completely rebuild, gain a lot of assets, build to the draft like Utah has done uh, in the past. But now we're going to move on to the more important part of this deal, which is the Cleveland Cavaliers getting Donovan Mitchell. And man, is this team going to be very, very good for the next couple of years. They already had three future all-stars on their team in Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen. And then they add a 25 point per game score in Donovan Mitchell without giving up a whole lot of their current roster. This, this team is going to be insane. Now, I'm going to pump the brakes. I'm not going to say they're true contenders this year because they still have to fill out a wing. And it really depends on Evan Mobley's growth. If Mobley jumps up to be a high tier caliber all-star player next year, um, this team is definitely going to be contenders. And then Isaac Okoro, their one wing on their team, needs to develop a three-point shot. Uh, they also have Karis LeVert, but he's more of a two-guard, uh, in, in my opinion. But this team is really, really good. Now, I know there's a there's um, issues with the small backward they have with Darius Garland being like 6'1", and Donovan Mitchell being 6'1". Uh, Darius Garland has no real potential to be a good defender, there, there, you know, nothing there for him to be a defender. But Donovan Mitchell, back when he was college, one of the reasons why he was drafted so high was because he was a great on-ball defender, and he kind of walked away from that when he got to the NBA. But with that said, if Mitchell doesn't improve his defense, which he has the capability to do so, they still have a two-headed monster in the paint in Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. And we, just like we saw in Utah, Mitchell's lack of defensive capability or effort was hidden by the fact that Rudy Gobert was such a great interior defender. So they're pretty much building the same formula as they did, as you know, Utah did. As It doesn't matter if their backcourt is a poor defensive backcourt because you have two bigs down there who are going to block shots, switch on ball, and just be terrific defenders. And, if, and Isaac Okoro is a, great, a good enough defender to where you can play him down the stretch in valuable minutes. And you have enough scoring to where his lack of a three-point shot um, can can be hidden a little bit more. My my only big question is how is Garland and Mitchell going to play? Because I project Garland to be one of the best point guards in the NBA. He pretty much already is, but like I'm talking top five. Um, and will Mitchell take away from that too much? Can Mitchell really become an off-ball guy? Because I rather have Garland being the primary ball handler because of his playmaking ability. And if, and if Mitchell can prove to be a you know more of a catch and shoot role and then take uh you know take lead and take charge of the offense when he needs to, is going to be a huge success. They can figure out a way to balance out that between the two of them. Uh, and I think there's a world where for 48 minutes a game, either Darius Garland or Donovan Mitchell is going to be on the court, which is absolutely insane. That's going to be a great running offense. And then you know, of course you kept you kept your three main guys in Garland, Mobley. Um, and Allen, you even kept a Coral, which I was really surprised. I thought for sure he would at least be in the deal, uh, but he wasn't. 
And now moving forward to the draft picks they gave up, I'm really not too concerned about that. Uh, I think that giving up, well, I guess technically six first round draft picks is not a huge deal. Because you have Garland, who's 21. You have Mobley, who's 20. You have Allen, who's 23, 24. You have Mitchell, who's 26. And they're all, I mean, you have Mobley for guaranteed seven years. You have Allen guaranteed for another four. You have Garland guaranteed for another four. And I think Mitchell's contract got three more years left on it. Maybe four, eight, but also could be two. I need to fact check that. But you're looking at a damn good team for the next seven or five or seven years at least. So those picks are probably going to be mid-20s. Uh, you know, maybe they have a couple bad years to where it's a back, you know, back end of the draft where it's like 15 16 17th overall pick but how many of those picks really pan out to be productive players not 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 a ton of them right right not a ton of them so giving up that draft capital is really not a big deal for them i think they definitely definitely killed this trade uh they get an a plus for me no questions about it this is gonna be a very very exciting team and i and i can't wait to watch them play honestly garland was already fun enough to watch alongside evan mobley now they added Donovan Mitchell to have that two-headed offensive firepower at the at the at the front court, or at the back court, excuse me. And then they have a terrific defensive back court in Okoro, Mobley, and Allen. Stellar trade for Cleveland. It's it came out of nowhere when this trade came out. But with that said, I got to talk about New York Knicks in this video. Uh, New York ended up blowing it again. Um, I don't. Part of me says like. So they're going back and forth and they signed, so the Knicks signed RJ Barrett to a poison pill contract, meaning like the team that traded for him would have to pay him more than the Knicks do. I think that's how that works. So they pretty much signed signed RJ Barrett to an FU to uh, Danny Ainge, who thought was toying with him, but they let their pride get in the way of this trade. They should have let go to RJ Barrett but the Jazz didn't want him, but then they ended up getting Colin Sexton because they had to pay him. Like, like that's kind of confusing to me. But you tell me all those draft picks you've traded for and have promised New York that you traded for these picks to go after a player like Donovan Mitchell and don't pull it off is pretty sad in my opinion. And like you had young assets to throw in a trade that are better than the young assets that they got from Cleveland. You had Critton Grimes, you had Obi Toppin, you had RJ Barry, you had Mitchell Robinson. Uh, there's one more guy I'm missing. I cannot. This is one more guy, but I whatever. All those guys are better than the young assets that the Jazz ended up receiving. I'm not saying New York should have traded all of them, but they also had more picks available to them than the Cavs did. So I don't know how you get outbidded by the Cleveland Cavaliers deal. I, I just don't understand how that happens. Uh, New York, you needed a star on your team to please everyone. Um, and if you look at the core group of guys, are they really going to be better than what Don and Mitchell could give you for the next four to five years. I, I, I personally don't think so. I don't think RJ Barrett is going to be that good. I don't think the combination of Quentin Grimes, Obi Toppin, and some other guys are going to match the level of production of Don of one Donovan Mitchell on your team. Um, and then all the draft picks, New York f extended their first rookie since 1994. So like that's almost 20 years where they've. Well, they haven't extended a rookie that they drafted. Like, I don't I don't understand why they want to hold on to those draft picks so bad because they don't end up keeping the players they draft. Uh, not that I really care about how good New York is. Uh, I think it's funny that they're mediocre at best every single year. Um, I'm just really excited for Stephen A on ESPN on first take. Uh, I'm going to be refreshing my YouTube every five minutes to see if he posted. But that's pretty much my uh, thoughts on Donna Mitchell trade. Jazz get like a B for me. Uh, Cavs get an A plus and the Knicks will obviously get an F because they really blew this for the organization. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I got two more pop on the screen if you want to watch some more content. Thanks.